Back on the countdown with dueling political rallies. Hillary Clinton, left side of the screen, is set to get underway momentarily in Colorado. Donald Trump gave us old head fake. We thought he'd wrapped up before our last commercial. He was just apparently walking away from the uh, lectern to, I don't know, get some more energy, and he's back at it there in, uh, in Florida. Less than a month to go before this selection. Maybe ETFs, as we bring it back to the markets for a moment, are a safe way to play the market versus individual stocks. So we have a candidate-friendly trade for you here before the opening bell with the editor of ETF trends.com and that would be Tom Lydon. Good to see you, Tom. Um, Great scene. You know, with the few minutes we have, let me, the, the idea is if Hillary Clinton wins, that's being looked upon as the most likely outcome, not necessarily the definite outcome, but the most likely. What does that mean as an investor? How do you look at an, at an ETF? What's some advice? Well, she's a big fan of Obamacare. I think we're going to continue to see more of that pushing uh, the Obamacare more. It's great for generic drugs. So there's actually a market vectors generic drug ETF out there that's really been gaining steam as we've seen more steam with her campaign. In addition, uh, Mexico has not been favorable towards Trump, but when she's done better in recent uh, debates lately, we've seen Mexico peso increase and also uh, EWW, which is the uh, right. the Mexico ETF, the iShares Mexico ETF. On the contrary side, if Trump happens to win, yes. it's great for aerospace and defense. ITA is uh, the iShares aerospace and defense industry ETF. And, and then finally, banks with less regulation, especially he's not a big fan of, uh, of Dodd-Frank, we're going to see probably right. banks do much better as well. I think if a lot either of it, though, candidate you're not a fan of, there's a new ETF that's out today, the Spirits and Whiskey ETF, oh. WSKY. There you go. So w you can drown right your sorrows. W WSKY. Uh, you know, I was gonna. You know, it's interesting because you, you, we do this uh, story every four years, not necessarily with ETFs, but with markets in general. But how much does it matter? Or are you looking maybe uh, for political, uh, for political sake at least, at the House and the Senate? That if it all were to go to one side, then you have a different market, right? Well, that's it. I mean, there's, that's where a lot of the power is. And if something's going to happen, it's going to happen in the House and the Senate. Most feel that we're not going to see a heck of a lot of change right now. But again, fingers crossed. Uh, and, and for most investors, ETFs have been a lot more than these trendy areas that we've just talked about. A lot of it has been low cost. We're up to $2.4 trillion. And a lot of it's been going into core investment areas like domestic equities and right. like fixed income. However, we're going to have to watch and see what the Fed does because we've That's had it. 30 years of declining rates. We were talking about it earlier. I mean, obviously, there's a bet now whether or not they'll raise rates in December after today's Fed minutes. But that being, you know, putting that aside for a moment, they will raise rates. Rates will go up from here. So how do you play that? Well, that's it. So you have to be shorter on duration, no 20 and 30 year treasuries. And you have to look outside the U.S. Some areas like emerging market debt is completely in, in a great situation from a value standpoint. But average investors don't look like uh, don't look to emerging markets as something that's safe. It's a great way to diversify. It is safe in so your view, though. More, well, it, it is compared to long term treasuries at this point, hands down. But the average investor has to get through the educational aspect of that in order to diversify, to enhance yield and look for areas where you can have some appreciation as well as emerging markets this year have bounced back tremendously. OK, now before I were to wrap it up here in a second and we're still watching that Donald Trump rally in Florida and we'll wait in the next hour. They should have coverage, I would think, of, of Hillary Clinton's event. Are you betting then, Tom, just from an investment point of view on, on one outcome or another, the, the Hillary Clinton win, for example? You try, it's kind of pricing it in your mind real quick before we get the closing bell here. Well, I, I think right now it's it, it's already baked in uh, to the markets that we're going to have some unsettled uh, candidate in place because of the lack of popularity for right. sure. As you pointed out earlier, the House and the Senate really will rule the day. The key is, mm -hmm. I think, as we look at the economy and see what's going on, and Real most quick. importantly, what the Fed's doing uh, as we close the bill. On that note, well done, Tom. We're going to look at the markets and how they uh, close it up for the day. There it is, the closing bell on Wall Street. It's David Asman and Melissa Francis picking it up on After the Bell. And, uh,